Today we are taking a look at simple sci-fi, a new add-on that will help you create sci-fi elements, from spaceship details to whole cities and everything else in between. Developed by Greasy Bear and Chip Walters, the creator of the well-known KDOPS add-on. Simple Sci-Fi is a displacement and geometry generator that can create any number of displacement maps. Generally speaking, this is a systemized approach for creating 32-bit displacement maps, and these maps can be mapped to instant geometry that you can then use to create and iterate through a variety of models and d-packs. Simple Sci-Fi is offering two versions, a pro version and a free version. The free version comes with three different d-packs, one for shapes, one for geometry, and one for creating lighting maps. The pro version will include many more d-packs, of course, and a lot of extra stuff such as kit bashing objects that you can incorporate into your scene in addition to custom displacement maps and more. If you are wondering what d-packs are, they are the building blocks of the sci-fi scenes. Different d-packs only work with one of the three generators, shape generators, dust generators, and geometry generators. What simple sci-fi is, in essence, is a geometry node setup with d-packs layered on top of that. Unlike KitOps and Design Magic, no installation is required. It is also important to note that Simple Sci-Fi add-on only works with Blender 3 and beyond. One of the main features of Simple Sci-Fi is the ability to generate instant geometry. This allows for much less resources when modeling, and this way you won't need a powerful machine, which is necessary if you are using the traditional way of generating geometry. However, you can easily make the instant geometry real, thus you will be able to edit it as if it were real geometry. The way you use the add-on is that you open the sci-fi.blend file, grab one of the generators, either shape gen, geo gen, or dot gen, to generate a design that you like. You can customize your design further using the controls found in the modifiers panel. You have two collections, bottom level collections and top level collections, and you can adjust the density and size of both collections. Also, a quick tip is to use the seed value to iterate through random distributions. To export your color or the sitemap, switch the material pass on in the modifier panel. You can adjust the colors by changing the color ramp node colors, but try not to move the handles. Now you can hit F12 and save your sitemap. Similarly, you can export your lights or dots map by switching to the light map generator or dots generator, which allows you to generate a randomized dot pattern and it is going to be used for creating lights and emissive details, adjusting the modifier parameter to your liking. You can manipulate and control the density, the size, and the number of rows. Also, you can switch the colors on and off. In addition, you can adjust the colors of your lights by modifying the colors of the color ramp node, and you can hit F12 to export your dots maps. Once you are happy with the design, save a copy of the blend file and make sure you do not override the original add-on file, and keep that always as your starting point. When you start a new scene and import or append the GeoGen collection from the copy you just saved, you can hide the original D-Pack collection, and you can preview your materials by going through the modifier panel and switching the render material pass to 1. This will show you the albedo color map, also referred to as the side map. To adjust the material, jump to the shader editor and switch to the main material, where you will find all the material controls and you can load your exported maps from earlier. You can adjust the strength of the lights, the scale and the brightness, and the contrast by using the controls provided within the dot lights group. Similarly, you can load your side map as well by selecting the site underscore PNG group and hit tab. Remove the embedded image and load your site.png image instead. Hit the tab key again to exit the group. The group material holds other material settings such as vertex color, metallic, roughness and normal settings, also the side map settings. You can switch between vortex or top color and side color by adjusting the top side mix slider. The metallic value of the material can also be adjusted, and you can move the threshold to include more or less geometry in the metallic map, or you can invert it as well. At the bottom, you can adjust your side map scale, location, brightness, and contrast. Going back to the simple sci-fi add-on blend file, the shapes generator will allow you to generate high-quality 32-bit EXR displacement maps displacement maps that you can export and use to displace your geometry. And to adjust all the settings, head to the Object Modifier tab, and the Geometry Nodes modifier lists all the settings you need. When rendering displacement maps, make sure it is a 32-bit EXR with lossless zip compression. When rendering color diffuse and emission maps, however, it is better to use an 8-bit PNG file. 
The reason why you want to do this is that even though the size of both files is similar on your hard drive, when it comes to GPU performance, using 32-bit will take up 16 times more memory compared to the 8-bit files. The simple sci-fi add-on is great. I've already sunk two days playing around with it, and the results you can achieve with it are mind-blowing. Everything is extremely simple and straightforward. We didn't talk much about kit bashing stuff and the use of some displacement maps because we wanted to keep it short and sweet, but the developers released a couple of videos detailing how to download and use the add-on. So check these videos if you want to know more about the add-ons, also you can find the necessary links about the add-on in the description. I hope you found this video useful, if you did please give it a thumbs up, you can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.